What's up guys? Welcome to another video brought to you by The Simple Engineer. Today we are going to delve into probability and statistics. I've picked out four main topics uh, that really introduce the idea of probability and stats and it's calculating the sample mean which is a, a reasonable estimate of uh, calculating the average from a population. Um, we're going to be looking at sample variance, which represents the spread or variation of data, and it's just another way to measure variability in a sample of data. And uh, then we'll take a look at sample standard deviation, as well as frequency histograms, um, which is a way to visually represent um, how much uh, data occurs in certain sets. Uh, so without further ado, let us get started. So uh, first thing that I want to take a look at is sample mean. And uh, like I had mentioned previously, sample mean is just a way to calculate the average um, from a sample of data. So what this means is, say you have 300 million people in the United States, and some statisticians want to figure out how often do people brush their teeth every single day. Well, obviously you can't go to all 300 million people and say, hey, do you brush your teeth every day, yes or no? So what they do is they take a random sample, say a thousand people, and they'll get that information from them. and if those people uh, say yes or no or whatever, they add it up, and that's uh, pretty much a representation of the entire population. They take a sample population randomly, and they say, okay, this represents the entire population. And then they add that up and divide it by the number of people total, and they get an average. So on average, um, this many people brush their teeth per night from that thousand sample group and that will represent the entire population. Anyway, so let's get started. We are going to actually be using um, a small set of data as an example to um, better introduce the idea of sample mean. But before we take a look at that, I want to show you guys um, formulaically sample mean is represented by the following. We have x bar um, so don't get scared if you see x with a bar over it, that's going to be representing sample mean. And this equals 1 over n multiplied by the summation of i equals 1 to n of x sub i. Now, um, I will show you uh, the chart or uh, piece of data that we're going to be looking at. And we have... Um, a group of college kids and the surveyor wanted to know on average how many hours per night each of these college kids slept. So as you can see we have 10 kids and they were given the following pieces of data. So if we look at our formula it shows 1 over n. Well the n here is just representing the number of observations which in this case would be the number of students. So it's the number of things you're observing within the set of data. And the x sub i is referring to just the individual element, individual element in, in the current set, in the current set. So we'll take a look here. Um, for the use of this problem, we had x equals, and then the set of data was 7, 8, 7, 6, 8, 9, 4, 7, 6, 5. Okay, so these are the respective hours to the group of college kids that were surveyed for how many hours they sleep per night, and we want to calculate the sample mean using the above formula. So what that would look like is in the number of people we're observing, there's 10 people total in this set of data, so that's going to be our n in this case. So we'll say n equals 10 students, and the x sub i is referring to the current element in the set, and it's a summation. So we're starting at i equals 1, which would be this 7, i equals 1, and then it increments all the way to 
i equals 10. So if we want to fill out this um, formula, we would technically have x bar equals 1 over 10 multiplied by, and the summation of each element technically means we take 7 plus 8 plus 7 plus dot, 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 all the way to 5. So we add all of these elements together and divide by the total num number of elements in the set. And this is going to equal our sample mean. So um, I've actually gone ahead and uh, summed all these together, and it comes out to be 67. So because there's 10 people in the set, we would take 67 over 10, and we would get 6.7 here. So the 6.7 uh, is representing the sample mean. So on average, out of this set of data, each college kid is getting about 6.7 hours of sleep per night. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just remember um, this number here. So we'll write 6.7 in the top just so we don't forget it because we are going to now look at sample variance, which is the measure of variability in a piece of data. So sample variance. And like I said before, we'll just note that the x bar was equal to 6.7 hours. And this also follows a similar formula. And it's denoted usually by s squared equals 1 over n minus 1 multiplied by the summation of i equals 1 to n of the current element in the set minus the sample mean which uh, here is 6.7, so you see it's actually constant while you calculate the following, and then you square that entire um, piece. So if we were to take that previous set of data, um, it would look like the following. Because uh, we have 10 items in the set, this is going to be 1 over 9 multiplied by, we'll actually distribute it across all of this because this is outside the summation, so we take the current element in the set, and looking at our piece of data here, we see the first element in the set is 7, 7, 8, 7, all the way to 5. So this looks like we would take 7 minus, and then 6.7 is our x bar, so this squared. And then it's a summation, so we're going to take the next one. So the next number was 8 minus 6.7 squared plus, and then it goes on and on and on all the way to, and then I think our last one was, the last value in the set was 7 again, so it would be 7 minus 6.7 squared. And you take all of the numbers squared and you add them together, and then you multiply it by 1 over n minus 1, which in this case is 1 ninth. So we'll actually go ahead and calculate that just to have it um, actually what I want to do is show you at this point in time because uh, this is a more advanced calculation it takes a little bit more time I think this would be a good time to show you guys how to do this on your calculator um, and in my instance I'll be using the Inspire CAS CX however um, this idea is universal to all the Texas Instrument calculators um, from my understanding. So we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So the way that we will uh, typically start this is um, obviously this is different than the majority of you watching this but you want to go ahead and get to a list where you can implement some sort of list of data. Um, in the CAS you just go to uh, lists I believe it just says lists and spreadsheets and you start inputting your data. So I will go ahead and copy and paste the data that we have for the amount of kids uh, hours slept per night. And what you do is you select the entire column and you go menu statistics and you go stat calculations and you want to do one variable statistics. And I know for a fact that this is uh, the same for all the calculations uh, for any calculator. Just hit one variable statistics, click.
click OK and click OK. And what it does is it automatically calculates the sample mean here. So it says 6.7. Well, if you remember correctly, uh, we got 6.7 as the mean previously. And uh, then you can see the sample standard deviation and the rest of these values, uh, which makes it a lot easier than uh, just calculating individually with your uh, pencil and paper. So that's just a little trick to um, figure this out on your calculator. Um, just a couple things to note if uh, some of this looks a little uh, foreign to you. Uh, the S sub X is representing the sample standard deviation. Um, this sigma X is represent, uh, representing the uh, population standard deviation, which is uh, something that we actually don't look at most of the time, so you can actually ignore this one. Um, but sample standard deviation is important because to solve for sample standard deviation, you just take the square root of the sample variance. Uh, which is what we were just talking about here. This is sample variance. Sample standard deviation is the square root of the answer you get from this. So if you are able to plug this in your calculator and get sample standard deviation, you can take 1.49 squared, and that will be your uh, numerical output for the sample variance. So anyways, uh, good thing to remember. If you have any issues calculating this on your calculator, feel free to leave a comment and I can try to link you to something that is a little more intuitive. But uh, the next topic that I want to cover, uh, like I said, sample standard deviations, just the square root of the sample variance. So we are going to go ahead and skip over to frequency histograms. And frequency histograms are really nice because they kind of visually represent your data um, frequency histograms they visually uh, represent your data to show you how things are categorized or laid out um, based on how often they occur within some set, set of data so if you have say you have some after-school club and it's comprised of all different age groups so we want to graph, that's a bad color, we want to graph how often uh, these certain age groups appear within this club. So say we have 16 children total and they vary in age. Well, there's a, a standard rule of thumb because you it's like a bar chart. You have a bar here and this is representing how many kids are in each category. You need to figure out how many bars are you going to have in your graph. So we'll say this is the age and this is the number of children in the club after school. And we have 16 kids. Well, the standard rule of thumb is the number of bins that you create is equal to the square root of the number of things in your set of data. So because we have 16 kids, we're technically going to be having four different bins or four different categories of children in our group and uh, the ages range from 0 to 18 so n um, 2 is going to be equal to the square root of 16 which is equal to four total bins okay so what we'll do is because we have ages 0 to 18 we'll take 0 to 3 here we'll take 4 to 8 here and we'll take 9 to 14 here, and then we'll take 15 to 18 here. So we have bin 1, bin 2, bin 3, bin 4. And uh, the ages, or the number of children, we'll just say 2, 4, 6, and 8. So this is going to say, okay, how many children are ages 0 to 3, how many children are 4 to 8, and so on and so forth. And uh, we would graph this, so say there's four children that are 0 to 3 years old, and we would have a bar there, and we would say that there's six children that are 4 to 8 years old, and you would just keep plotting this data, and you get this graphical representation of um, a set of numbers, and it's a lot easier to uh, see. 
And what I want to do is actually show you, like before, how to do this in your calculator. Um, so I will bring this over here. And it's a similar thing. You want to go to Listen Spreadsheets. And we'll say um, kids. We'll just label this as kids. And we'll put in just a bunch of ages for these uh, children. And like I said, there is 16 children total. And they're ranging from ages 0 to 18. So 14, we'll just do 15, 17, 16, 12, 11. OK, so we have 16 children ages from 0 to 18. What we'll do is I will select this and go Menu, um, Data, Quick Graph. And what I did is I just graphed this. And you see this, I will go Histogram. And it throws it into this nice bar chart. It says, OK, there are this many kids that are this age, this many kids this age, this age, this age. OK, and what it does is it shows you how frequent uh, or what the frequency is of certain ages uh, relevant to the group. Um, the only difference here is there's a bunch of different bins. So the way to change that is you go scale or bin settings and you can change the bin width okay so um, if I plug in 4 here and the alignment I say is 3 and I hit OK you see that this completely changed there's now 4 uh, bins total and it shows the frequency of kids from this age to this age there's 7 from this age to this age there's um, you know, this many kids, there's this many kids from this age, this many kids from this age. So uh, this is how you construct a frequency plot, and it's just a really nice way to uh, visually represent your data. So thanks, guys, for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the bottom.